Okay, so I've been a big fan of Topaz for a long time. I used to use Adjust all the time. Topaz Adjust was my favorite. I put it on just about every image. Didn't matter if it was a portrait, landscape, whatever. I would just put it on top, bring back the opacity a little bit, just to give it a little more pop. Love that plugin. I've kind of drifted away, haven't used much Topaz in a while, been using a lot more Luminar, but I've been hearing a lot about Topaz's Photo AI and I wanted to check it out and see what it does exactly. Now, Photo AI isn't so much of a photo enhancer as much as it appears to be kind of a photo repair software where it kind of goes in and fixes things like resolution problems, sharpening issues, and things like that. And uh, it's supposed to really streamline that workflow. So I'll be curious to see how it works. If you don't already have Topaz Photo AI, there is a link down in the description where you can check it out. If you watch till the end of the video, I will even tell you how you can get a copy for free. Yes, you heard me right, for free. But enough of that for now, it's time to jump into the software. So without any further ado, let's roll the intro. Okay, so here are the two images we're gonna use. I've got this uh, stock image I got off Unsplash. I'll put a link down below in case you wanna download it and try it yourself. Thought this would be kind of just a good overall image to see uh, what it would do. And then I've got this travel image here that I'm going to really challenge it by cropping in really tight and um, seeing how good it does at kind of making up for all that lost resolution. So these will be the two we'll try. Um, you've got two different ways of using Photo AI. One is as a plugin in Photoshop, which we will use for this one. The other is doing it standalone, which we will use for the second image, and I'll tell you why when we get to that. But for now, let's just jump into the software. Okay, see down here in the bottom corner, we can see that it's scanning the image and going to work. And you've got some different ways of displaying. Right now we're set to this, um, I guess it's like a split screen where we can move this bar back and forth and see the before and the after. Uh, the other is doing it like that where it sets up more of a side-by-side -side split screen. I kind of like using this one so I can decide what, what exact part I'm looking at. So over here, We've got the autopilot where it has gone ahead, looked at the image, and made its own decisions on what things need to be done. And we can kind of go through a, a few of these things. You know, it's got subject detected, and you can hover over that, and it shows you that's what it thinks the subject is, which is cool because it's going to work with the subject and not work with the background. Um, you got faces here, and it's identified the face of the lion, which sometimes these things don't always work with the animals. And uh, so it shows you what it's done. And under image quality, you've got these different groups. And as you can see here, we've got remove noise, sharpen, recover faces, enhance resolution. And it hasn't done anything on these three. You can see they're turned off. It has only done the remove noise setting. So basically, it has looked at this image and said, we really don't need to do anything other than remove noise. And if we go over here to the before and after, you can actually see some sharpness. If we look here in the eye, I can really see it in the eye and up here. It has sharpened that a little bit. So I don't know that it hasn't done some sort of sharpening to it. It, it seems to have done a little bit. And we can click into this remove noise. And you can see here, it's just on the normal setting. That's the strength it's done and then bringing back the detail. And maybe that's why we're getting this extra on here. But it definitely has enhanced the image. It's determined that it doesn't need any sharpening. But you can, of course, override any of these. So we could jump into sharpening and just leave it on standard. And we can play around with this a little bit, bring the strength down so it's not a super amount. Let's see what that does. Now we can come over here and look at our before and after. And it's definitely much, much sharper. See a huge difference. Now you're starting to get kind of an over-sharpened look through here. Um, so I might probably even dial that down a little bit more. And it doesn't really even need the sharpening, but I like what it did to the eye and the mane up here. But that's a pretty good difference right there. So you can go with what it suggests for you. If you start messing around too much and you go, you know what, I liked it better how it was, you can just reset to the auto pilot settings and it'll just go back to its analysis and what it thinks needs to be repaired on the image. And even that's a pretty good uh, difference. And again, I'm mostly looking here in the eye and up here in the top of the main. 
and looks pretty good. So I think that worked pretty well. This wasn't a super challenging one, but uh, it, it worked out okay. You've got this upscale feature down here where you can go in and upscale an image, and that's what we're going to work on next. And you'll notice it's not supported in Photoshop, so when it's a plugin, you don't have this option available. We can click down here and nothing happens. So that's why in the next image, we're going to go in and do it as a plugin. Really quickly, we can just look through these other things. You've got Recover Faces uh, down here, which specifically looks for faces and tries to do work on them. Let's see, it's actually going the other direction here. The thing I've noticed is if you do it on something that doesn't need repair, it actually makes it look worse. So you don't want to recover face unless you need it. And then Enhanced Resolution is basically it's going to go through and try to create pixels to make an image appear to have more resolution than it actually had. And we don't really need that here, so we've left it off. You know, obviously you don't want to try and fix things that don't need to be fixed because you're just going to introduce new problems. But this is a pretty good autopilot that it's done right there. So we can go ahead and save to Photoshop. So let's take a look at this one. And my thoughts are to go ahead and crop this image and then see if we can size it up and obviously it's going to start eating up pixels on us uh, when we start cropping in super tight. So that's the one we're going to play with. And to make it work, we're going to go ahead and just access Photo AI just as a standalone. So I'll open that up and we'll come right back. Okay, so when we open it up like this, uh, we will just go in here and browse images and pull up this image. And let's zoom out here to fit so we can see the whole image. So this is the image we have right here, and it's already going to work on it, but we, we want to make things tougher before it goes to work. So I'm going to come down here to crop, pick this little crop button, and what I'm going to do is see if we just zoom in on this guy walking up to his boat and get in kind of close on him. Not that we would normally crop it this way, but... Let's just see what would happen if we came in super tight like this. So we can see we're using just a very small part of the image. So now you can see we've cropped that image down to just this, which is going to definitely uh, make things a little more challenging. Let's split to this white split screen. So we've got our before and the after on the right. And so what I'm going to do is, in addition to cropping in like this, I'm going to also do like a four times size up. So we're going to go from right now, the width is about 3,300 pixels. Crop it up here, and that's going to bring it to about 13,000. So pretty big size up. We've re we're really kind of pushing the issue, and we're forcing this file to create pixels that weren't really there. So I'm going to go ahead and come into 100% so we can really see what we're doing here. And let's get to this guy. And as we can see here, you can see that it's really started to pixelate. Definitely see it along this jagged edge here. We're seeing some jagged back here. Um, really see it along there. So the question is, uh, is the software able to fix this? So we can see they've gone ahead and they've discovered the subject. It looks like it's discovered a bunch of subjects, but we're really only worried about this guy right now. It's uh, recovered the face. There wasn't much noise here, so it, you can see it hasn't done the noise. If you see noise, you can go ahead and do that. It hasn't really messed with sharpening, um, but it's recovered faces. So uh, it has gone in, and see it's done a lot of work on that. It's probably trying to fix these jagged lines right here. And then enhance resolution that we talked about before, where it's coming in and it's trying to fill in all these pixels so you don't get this jagged look. And so... Um, that's what we're trying to do. That is the problem we have given to it. So we're going to kind of look along here, and you can already kind of see over here a little spoiler, but as we move it over, the right is what the software has done. And let's watch along this up here where it's super pixelated along the sleeve, and it's certainly smoothed it out. We've got a little bit of blur over there, but I think I would take that over that. Um, and so let's come into the face. Let's get him down here. We can see a little better. And wow, the face looks way better. Um, now, interestingly, it's softened things a bit. It's almost given him like a painterly type look. But if we look at this line across here, this 
shadow line. It's gone from super pixelated. This looks like this was something shot on a 10-year-old cell phone or something. Um, that's actually pretty nice. Now again, it's this painterly type thing, but that's also probably because we're looking at it super close up. But given the choice of this or that, uh, I think that's a huge difference. Let's put on the split screen here so we can see them at the same time. And it really is a huge improvement over what we had right here. That's just super pixelated. And here we smoothed it out. Now we could come back in here and you could say, I don't want as much of that blur uh, or removing the blur, uh, this compression fix. You could play around with these settings and get it to kind of what you want. But my experience has been what the AI does is generally how I want to leave it. it. It seems like half the time I go through and I play around with all these settings in here, I end up going back to reset and it ends up looking better anyway. So I would recommend, at least for a while, just going with these autopilot settings. But I think that is a pretty crazy job that it's done for um, upsizing this image. And you know, you're gonna have some things incorporated into this that are gonna make it less desirable. Um, and this painted type look is, is part of that. But still, I think when you're kind of looking at this, especially if we pull back, you know, 33% or something um, to a more normal type distance, that actually looks really good. And it's fixed a lot of these terrible telltale pixelization problems that we had. Uh, but it hasn't incorporated, if we like look here in the water, um, it hasn't created a ton of noise or other problems. It really has just been working on him, which I think is a really nice bonus. So for an actually kind of difficult project we've given it here, I think it's done a pretty nice job. So let's go ahead and save the image. And uh, we get here. Uh, here's the image we're going to be doing. And it's got the uh, ability here when we name the file, we can put a prefix in front of it, a suffix after it. So which is really nice because you'll know what you did to it. So we've got this little add applied filters to file name. And it's going to put it back in the original folder. Let's save it. And as you can see here, it took the uh, file name, which was uh, Beach Image Copy, added Topaz to it, and Enhanced Face. So uh, you know that that's what you did to it. It makes kind of a long, cumbersome file name, but uh, I think that's kind of cool to have that on there so you know uh, what it is you did to it. But overall, I think it did a great job, so hang on, I'll tell you how you can get a copy for free. Pretty interesting software. I think it's going to kind of depend on what kind of an image you're using it with as far as how effective it is for you, but it certainly does have a really nice ability to kind of be a, a one-click and it makes all the changes for you solution. Now there's not a ton of customizing in it, which can be good or it can be bad. If you're a control person, you want to be able to make all those little changes, it might not be for you. But if you'd like the computer to do a lot of the thinking for you, it's going to do a pretty good job and probably get you really close to where you want to be really quickly. Okay, so if you'd like to get a copy free, the good people at Topaz have given me a copy of the software to give away. All you have to do is leave a comment below. And in your comment, just let me know what you like about the new software or what you don't like about the new software. We will take all those comments, draw one of them out, and that person will get a free copy of the software. Doesn't get much easier than that, so take a second now to go ahead and leave a comment. While you're down there, go ahead and like the video, because that helps as well. But that's all we've got for this week. I hope to see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.